I thought it was interesting as we think about children and the blessing they are, as I read some letters that some little ones wrote to their pastor. One named Pete, age nine, said, Dear Pastor, please say in your sermon, Peter Peterson has been a good boy all week. I am Peter Peterson, sincerely Pete. And I... I have gotten some amazing notes from children. I keep them all. I I have a record of them in my office, especially my own children as well as others in the church here. Another one, Alexander, age 10, said, Dear Pastor, please say a prayer for our Little League team. We need God's help or a new pitcher. Thank you, Alexander. (laughs) Ellen, age 9, said, I hope to go to heaven someday, but later than sooner. And, uh, And then... Ralph, age 11, said, Dear Pastor, I liked your sermon on Sunday, especially when it was finished. And I thought, well, that's the way most people feel about uh, preachers' sermons. I won't say my sermons, all right? Preachers' sermons. They love them, especially when they're finished, right? And so, but uh, children are a gift from God. And what a blessing they are. We're living today to where a generation turned away from God does not see their value, their worth. But God wants to remind us of that in His Word. And I want you to take your Bible and stand with me this morning, if you're able to stand, and turn with me to Psalm 127. We're going to begin here. Psalm 127, I want you to find your place. We're going to read... Verse 3 through 5. Let's read it aloud together. Psalm 127, beginning in verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Thank you. you may be seated. Just like there is strength in uh, having arrows in uh, the face of battle, there is strength in having children is what God is saying to us here. Children are a gift. They are a blessing from God. Perhaps you've heard of this woman from Russia, Valentina. And uh, she has the world's record for having the most children. This is a picture of her family. Think of this. 16 pairs of twins, seven sets of triplets, and four sets of quadruplets. 69 children. After she died, her husband remarried and fathered 18 more children. To gather him and his first wife, they had a total of 69, and then he ended up with 87 altogether himself with his second wife and his first wife together. Now I want to tell you, that is a quiverful, is it not? That's a lot of youngins, I'm telling you. And so many people are surprised in this day when they find out how many children me and my wife have. But I thought it was interesting as I looked at this And I thought about what God's Word says about the value of children and the blessing they are. And then what a quiver represents. And I want you to write some things down here this morning because God wants us to dedicate our children to Him and understand the value they are, number one, because they are indeed a gift from God. Make a note of that, if you will. They are a gift from God. The average quiver holds at least 10 arrows. I can say I have a quiver full in that regard. And, uh, but an archer during battle in medieval times may carry as many as 60 arrows in a very large quiver. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one youth. The arrows refer to children. A quiver full of arrows means having many children. These verses teach that having many children and grandchildren is a blessing from God. 
And I thank God for the gift of children. How many parents and grandparents do we have here today? Any great grandparents here this morning? All right, great indeed. I always remember. Thank you, Sandra. Recognize these great grandparents. I thought it was interesting. I read at the Battle of Agen Court in which England defeated France in 1415. It was estimated that there were 1,000 arrows fired every second. After the battle, observers wrote that the white feathers from the flights were so thick on the ground, it looked like snow. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man. Oh, how children are a gift from God to bless, to even defend. The Bible says, they shall not be ashamed, the end of verse 5, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Parents care for children when they're small. The time comes when children care and protect their parents when they're old. I want you to turn with me back to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. God wants us to dedicate our children to Him because they are a gift from God, but also because they are to be given back to God. Remember the prayer of Hannah, so desperate for a child, and God gave her little Samuel, which means ask of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 27 we read, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I ask of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Underline that. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. The word lent literally means to borrow. The thought is as in a loan, entrusted with, uh, given back to in that regard to the one who gave the child originally. And so I ask you this morning, have you ever really dedicated your child to the Lord? Have you ever said, Lord, I recognize that you gave this child or these children to me and I'm going to give them back to you. I'm gonna, as long as they live, they're going to be given back to you, Lord, for whatever your purpose is. They're not mine to consume upon myself and, and to do what I want, but they're yours and you have a purpose and a plan for each of their lives, Lord. One writer said, Our children are only ever lent to us. We never know just how long we'll be able to keep them for. So kiss them, cuddle them, and hold them tightly. But most of all, tell them you love them every day. Every day. God wants us to give our children back to Him, to dedicate them to the Lord, to recognize His gift of children and our stewardship of those precious little lives. He wants us to teach them the Word of God, lead them to Jesus Christ. People ask, what is the age of accountability? Is there a particular age the Bible gives when a child can be saved or should be saved? Well, here's a principle God gives in 2 Samuel 12. David had a child that died, a little baby. And David said, when this child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. That's a picture there of a child without knowledge and understanding of his or her need for Christ, a need for salvation and what that means. And they're covered by the grace of God when they leave this world, they are immediately in his presence. The Bible does not give a particular age of accountability. I heard 12 growing up. How many of you heard that? And that's rooted in certain things that people uh, just put together and they think, well, this God's Word doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that children can be saved. Suffer the little children to come unto me and what? 
Forbid them not. Don't hold them back. What is the age of accountability? It's any time in a child's life when he or she can understand his sin or her sin and his or her need for forgiveness. That's why you should pray for them and teach them and be gentle with them and loving toward them and helpful toward them that God the Holy Spirit would open their understanding and help them to see their own need for the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, when do they get baptized? Well, when they can understand what baptism is. I would never encourage a parent to tell a child he or she is saved. I've heard of children growing up and saying in the church as a teenager, they came forward and said, I need to be saved. And mom said, oh no, you don't need to be saved. You got saved when you were younger. Don't ever tell a child he or she is saved. Let the Lord settle that in his or her heart. That's something only God could do. That's why you pray and you gently guide them. You don't tell them they're saved. You don't tell them uh, they're not saved. You let God settle that in their heart. When they can understand their need for baptism, the step of obedience to identify with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, then encourage that. How many of you got saved as a child? Anybody saved at four years of age? Wow. Wow. I heard of a nationally known preacher says, I got saved at four years of age and has never doubted it. Being used of God in a wonderful way, amazing way. How many of you trusted Christ when you were five years old? Wow. Six years old? Seven? Eight? Nine? Ten? How many of you as a teenager trusted Christ? I did. Isn't that amazing? You say, what about the 11 and 12 year olds? All right, 11 and 12 year olds. All right, let's get those two. There you go. Do you see the importance of reaching children? The importance of training them early, giving them back to God? Guiding them, praying for them, teaching them, leading them to Jesus Christ. Having a family altar wherein you pray for them and pray with them daily. Taking them to the house of the Lord faithfully. Training them up in the way they should go. That word train there in Proverbs 22 and verse 6 literally means to narrow. I'm going to touch on that tonight in the message and I want you to be here and I want you to come with an open heart and mind to narrow in a day to where everything is filling our minds and our time. God says the way you train is to narrow. And people say, well, I want my children to know everything that's going on out there. The Bible says we should be wise unto that which is good, but we should be simple concerning evil. And may the Lord teach us as parents and give us that understanding and that wisdom to desire God's will in their lives above all else. I read this years ago. Royal children have to undergo extra training and discipline to fit them for their high destiny. They were talking about children born into royalty. They have their own personal, personal, individual teachers and tutors and trainers at certain levels of life. Why? Because they may be the king or queen one day, and they're in line for that. So there's extra training and discipline. You know what? The Bible says that we're children of the king. Why would we want to train our children more intentionally to know God and do His will for their lives? I know surely if we're serious as a Christian in raising our children for God, I know we pray for them each day. But do you pray with them each day, be it morning, noon, or night? Do you pray for them? I remember being in the British War Museum. And I read there as I walked through, and it's such an amazing collection of things they had. And they talked about how parents were to train their children to trust in God during the war. 
and they were to have prayer with their little ones every night so they would be comforted and not afraid. That was the government that put that literature out. Ways to reassure your children in wartime. And friend, there is a war that's raging today. There is a battle for the heart and the soul and the mind of our children. May God help us to get serious. The weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And how do we do that? We win the battle on our knees in prayer. Oh, may the Lord help us to be a praying people again. Some of us used to pray. God wants us to pray again. Some of us used to have confidence that God heard our prayers. Be reminded that God hears the prayers of his children. You say, well, I feel like God is so far away sometimes. Well, he said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going anywhere. So he's as close to you as he's ever been. We walk by faith and not by sight, not by feeling. Oh, I'll tell you, our children and grandchildren need the prayers of their parents, their grandparents. I told you it was my great-grandmother who prayed for me and Terry that God would save both of us and call us to preach. I want to tell you, there's no doubt in my mind God heard her prayers. There's no answer otherwise. With everything that was around us that we were growing up in, why were we not devoured by that? Someone was calling our name out as just little boys. God saved those two little cruise boys and called them to preach. Can you believe we're preachers? Oh, I tell you, one thing I, I can assure you of is this, is I know my brother, and I can't believe he's a preacher, all right? I can't believe it. And I'm sure he'd say the same about me, but it's called the grace of God. Isn't that right? It's the grace of God. People prayed for us, or you're praying for your children and your grandchildren, that God would speak to them, that God would keep them I, read a story recently of a, a dad. He said, I was just awakened by the Lord with a deep burden to pray for my adult child. And I found later on that they were in a situation where the vehicle they were driving in had caught on fire. And he told the story of how God mercifully preserved that adult child of his. He said, but it's the most unusual thing and I ask you this morning, have you ever felt an unusual urging of God in your heart to pray for a loved one? How many of you have ever been there? It's like God just bears down upon your heart. God impresses upon your heart. Pray for them. Oh, when God does that, just stop in that moment and whisper a prayer before God. There is a God in heaven. He's at work in all of our lives. And we need to teach our children how to pray how to get along with God, how to get answers from God, direction from God, knowing that God will hear their plea. Oh, may the Lord speak to us as we teach our children the things of God, the Word of God, right and wrong, a biblical worldview. Oh, it's something that is needed in this hour in our homes, but in our churches, in our Sunday schools. I tell you, we need a revival of Sunday school in this hour. Uh, that's what God blessed in England years ago. And there was a generation of children reached through a Sunday school. And there are churches and chapels being reestablished there now through the Sunday school. And we need a revival in our Sunday school. We need more workers and more laborers. We need people who will commit themselves to teach these precious little ones to hide God's word in their heart. I heard a song recently and I told Victoria, I said, I haven't heard that song in 42 years. But I know it by heart. And he just sat there and sing along. I said, I have not heard it in 42 years, but I just sing right with it. I said, that's the power of music. Oh, how we need these children's choirs and teen choirs and everything that we're doing working with these children to encourage them to involve them. So many of us can remember the little uh, 
jingles or the little tunes to the advertisements uh, back in the day. Remember? Isn't it amazing how you remember those things? The power of music. And all oh, to teach this generation. May God help us to understand that children are a gift from God. They're to be given back to God. God wants you to today to make sure that you've given yourself and your children to the Lord. Some of us may need to renew that commitment. Lord, I've given myself to you in the past, but I'm not really where I was then. I'm not there today in my commitment to you. God welcomes us to draw closer to him. Well, my children, Lord, I was teaching them, but I'm not quite teaching them like I once did. Aren't you thankful that God offers forgiveness? And fresh starts. God wants us just to start over. You say, well, preacher, I've just, you just don't know how I've stumbled or I failed or I I surely hadn't done it like some others have. I'll tell you what, there's not a parent here today hasn't stumbled or come short or missed the mark or has just not come to a place to where they realize, you know, I need to just draw nigh to the Lord here. I, I need to get closer to God. There's more at stake here than just me. The decisions I make in my daily life, they're affecting my little ones, my children, and my grandchildren, those who are following me. God, help me. Look over in chapter 3 here in 1 Samuel. I think it's interesting here. God wants us to dedicate our children to Him because they're a gift from Him. They're to be given back to Him. But then lastly, because they have great potential for him, great potential for him. I look at my children, I try to teach my children to dream. I didn't try to say, oh, watch out. Oh, I tell you, you just can't trust anybody. Oh, life is just so amazing, amazingly difficult and complex. Yes, we need to teach them to be prudent. And there are times when I read something like you do and I, and I forward it to my kids, you know, like be on the lookout. This is going on in this place. Or, or I you know, even saw where people were putting razor blades on gas handles, on the gas pump. How many of you saw that? Did you see that? So I thought, I better send that out to my children. They'll go to pump the gas and, and then cut their hand. I thought, I want to make sure. I mean, we do. We live in a crazy world. People who just inflict pain upon others just for the joy of it, as it were, on their end. <laughs> Amazing. That is a sin, sickness that has saturated our culture. May God in heaven have mercy on us. But I think about this. Yes, they're to, we're to teach them to be sober-minded, but we're to teach them to dream. I've been up at the Crown Bible Conference many times, and there's a young man there born with Down syndrome. Years ago, he's probably in his 40s now. His name is Paul Thomas. And every time he preaches on Wednesday night, he preaches a message entitled, Dream Big dreams. I love Paul. He comes up to me all the time and says, Brother Cruz, Brother Cruz, he'll hug my neck. And uh, he'll say, I've been praying for you. I've been praying for the children's home. He said, everywhere I go, I give out these prayer cards for the children's home. He said, I've got them on my table. His dad travels with him. And he said, everywhere I go, I tell people, pray for the shepherd's place. Pray for the shepherd's place. He said, I love you, Brother Cruz. I said, I love you, Paul. And he'll get up there and he'll preach, dream big dreams. We serve a big God. And our God is able to do anything. Trust Him. Ask Him to do big things in your life. Oh, the potential of our children. May God open our eyes. It's sad that parents look at children as a burden, as a bother, sometimes even as a curse. They're a gift from God. Oh, if God would open our hearts anew toward our own The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 19, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Every promise that God gave to this young boy, Samuel, God's word was brought to pass. His will was done. God used Samuel as prophet, priest, and judge to accomplish his purposes there among his people, Israel. I'll tell you, God has a purpose and a plan for each child's life. Do we believe that? I always try to challenge my children with that. Look at it as a positive thing. Hey, find out what that is and fulfill it. 
Be excited about it. I didn't come to the Lord as a senior in high school because I was so depressed or distressed or discouraged. I came to God because I believe there is a God in heaven. He made me. So if he made me, he put me in this world for a reason. I simply wanted to find out what that reason was. I literally never thought about being a preacher. Never entered my mind. And if you would have asked me about it, I said, no way. I'm not even thinking along those lines. And I wasn't. Till God changed my thinking. God changed my life. And I thought, Lord, I want to do your will, whatever that is. He said, well, I want you to preach my word. I said, well, okay. And I preached his word every opportunity I got and served our young people in our home church. And then the time came when this church said, would you pray about coming here as our pastor? And I said, I'm happy where I am. I'm not looking for anything. Thank you for coming. God bless you. The next week they came back and said, have you thought any more about what we asked you about last week? I said, well, I haven't because I'm happily where God has me. I'm serving the Lord there. I'm not looking to leave. They said, okay. And then the third week they called and said, for some reason we can't move beyond your name without asking you to pray about it. Would you at least pray about whether or not God would have you to come? And I thought, well, they asked me to pray, so surely I can pray. But in the back of my mind, I thought, I know it's not God's will. <laughs> but I'll pray since they asked me to. And I began to pray. And through prayer, the Lord began to work in my heart. And I was as shocked as anybody. I thought I'd be in my home church forever, working with the young people there. That was my calling, I thought. But God had different plans. I'm telling you, God has a plan for each of our children. We've got to see the beauty and the value of that. We, we've got to learn to teach them to dream, to believe God. We've got to enjoy the journey with them. We, we've got to play with them and laugh with them, be a dad and a mom to them. If there's anything now on this end, I can't believe we've raised 10 children so fast. Now, we did laugh and we had fun. We, we, we went all kinds of places. But if I had to do it over again, I'd have that much more fun. I probably would not be as serious at times because there's always, you know, every time we're riding down the road, see that billboard, what that says there, boys? And it's like, all right, here it comes, another sermon. And so, I mean, one day they actually said that. I said, well, okay. I was constantly, I want you to get this, I want you to get this, I want you to get this, I want you to know, I want you to know what's right, I want you to do what's right. Honestly, if I had to do all over again, I might do a little less of that and laugh a little more. Are you listening to me? You say, well, you want them to know what's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I want them to know what's real too. And see, this is not some facade. This is not some spiritual, uh, you know, kind of life you put on and you're not real, you're not human, or you can't even laugh and have fun. I tell you, people that I know that really are enjoying life are people who know the Lord. And they've learned that life is a gift from God. And they don't have to be so pious all the time, thinking somehow they're earning favor with God by being overly serious. And I'm a serious person. I, I don't know that we'd made it through, my brother and I, through some of the things, if it wasn't serious about tackling those challenges as a young man. And life is serious. But some of us, with all honesty, just need to lighten up a little bit. Isn't that right? We're choking our children and don't even know it. And if we did, we wouldn't do it for nothing. We wouldn't do it for nothing. But then sometimes, on the other end, if you're not careful, you're just not serious enough and you're just too loose. It's to live and let live and happy go free. No, they need parents. They need guidance. They need understanding. They need accountability. May God help us. Someone has said, childhood is a short season. Let me love you a little more before you're not little anymore. Enjoy the little things for one day you'll look back and realize they were the big things. The days are long, but the years are short. The fingerprints on the wall appear higher and higher, then suddenly... They disappear. God wants us to dedicate our children to Him, to bless them by entrusting them to His watch care 
asking him for wisdom to raise them for his glory and the good of others, that they would have a positive, eternal contribution to this world. God wants us to pray to that end. Now we know they ultimately have choices. And they are a free moral agent. But we want to remind them, we're not long for this world. And when we leave, we're going to meet the God who made us, right? We have to be prepared. We want to give account for the light that we've been given. We've been given a lot, many of us. I was reading this story about this mother. She collapsed. Her name was Jalen Emmett from Saratoga Springs, Utah. She had just gotten off the phone with her husband. He was stationed miles away in an Army Reserve basic training. She felt her heart racing. She had a heart rhythm disorder. And before she knew it, she just passed out. She awoke in, in an ambulance en route to the hospital. The paramedics explained what had happened. After she collapsed, her five-year-old son, Tregan, took the phone from her and calmly talked to the emergency operator that she had tried to call when she realized that something was wrong. He got on the phone and said, quote, my mom just died. As the dispatcher spoke with him, he identified himself as Spider-Man. And when asked again his name, he said, Peter Parker. Well, the 911 operator sent the EMTs there, and they cared for her. About that time, a younger brother wandered out, and then Tregan had to go and round him up and find him and bring him back home. And they said he remained calm through the whole episode. And so mom, as she recovered in the hospital and had surgery to correct that condition of the heart, they were able to get kind of back on their feet and get stabilized. And she was so grateful for this little boy, five years old. Think about that, who went to bat for his mother in a time of need. And I thought about that as I read it. It was just so tender to me. We know our children need us. We never know when we'll need them. That's why we should keep them close by giving them to God and us staying close to Him, to the Lord. My father-in-law was telling me this week about how much it means to him for his children to contact him and their mother. He said it means everything. He's 84 years old. <laughs> I was able to visit with him some yesterday. Jean is about to come home Tuesday. She's been down at White Oak in Waxhaw for rehab, surgery on her knee. And so we were talking about that. He said, every adult child needs to stay in constant contact with his or her mom or dad if they're still here because one day they won't be. You better make the most of it. And one way I believe we can encourage that is by us staying close to God and keeping our children close when they're small. Don't think, wow, you're kind of in my way. You're holding me back. No, one day you'll wish you could come back to the age they are right now. Are you listening to me? You say, well, yeah, you're just kind of cramping my style, and I want to do this. Hey, you'll have plenty of time to do that. You're going to be shocked how fast they grow up. You're going to be shocked. God wants you to make the most of what he's given you right now. Dedicate yourself to the Lord. Dedicate your children to the Lord. They are a gift from God. God wants them to be given back to him. And God wants us to see the great potential of their lives. Oh, the difference he can make. He will be their God. His word will come to pass. There's not one promise that he has given to them in his word that he'll ever go back on and they need to be taught to rest in that, 
to stand upon that, to be reassured with that. Our children need us one day. Oh, how God could use them in our lives. Let's stand with our heads bowed before the Lord.